How did he hurt his arm? He was tailgating and his sister were tight roping on um, the side of his dad's, their dad's truck. Yeah. And his sister. sister okay, uh, so he went down and uh, he's got a dislocated elbow. So we're going to be reducing that elbow here shortly. He got some, he's got some IV morphine and he's going to get some ketamine and, and we'll do this reduction. Go ahead and give, go ahead and give him a half of those. Uh, not point. Okay. So you, you never I, cross anteriorly. So while the wheel come up on the arm and have this part hold it down like so. Okay. Because we're going to do a long arm. You try to come up. I always like to do five wraps at the end of a plaster line because that's where the plaster is going to dig in the most. Gotcha. I also like to do five wraps over a fracture site or a bony prominence. So in his situation, the elbow is by far the most bony, so I do wraps like that. Oh, I need to take one more picture of this radius. Yeah, he's okay. He's oxygenating fine. He's up here at 100%. Some of the medications we use, well, they'll have myoclonic jerks. Um, and Atomidate generally will do that, but I haven't seen it with ketamine. But uh, our orthopedic resident does a lot of these, and he says he's seen it before, so. Yeah, if you think about it, like if you've ever been falling asleep and you jerk all the time. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he's in like a dream, dream state per se. So you're putting some struts on there. Yeah, that keeps him, supports the bend. Plaster is really weak in that plane. You know, if you just have a single sheet of plaster.
don't need to do the second one tight because it does an additive compression effect. Say it again? You don't need to wrap, if you end up having to overlap to get the full length, yeah. you don't need to do the second one tight because it has an additive effect on Okay, on the, compre on the amount of compression, it. yeah. try to put their elbow in, um, if it's completely stable, there's a couple positions that are beneficial for the elbow joint, supination versus pronation, and he was completely stable, so we're just going to put him in neutral. Okay. Um, if, he wasn't un, if he wasn't if they're, stable, if they're then... unstable, depending on the side that they're unstable to, so if you have a varus and valgus stress, and he opens up one way, if you rotate the arm the <coughs> other way, it puts these ligaments... On, on full tension, and it puts these ligaments so that they can heal back down. Okay. So that if you put them in that position there, then it's less likely to come out because the side is taut all the way around the joint okay. itself. Okay. And vice versa, going the other direction. And then you just uh, hold this until she dries. That's it. We'll take some more x-rays to make sure that it's still in. looked okay. good here. It had a good range of motion all the way through. didn't really see anything that felt like it was going to come out. It was in with both pronation. Rotating it down and rotating it up didn't seem like it was going to come out. So I would call it a simple dislocation, which usually has a really good outcome. We end up to be doing okay. We'll take another picture of his wrist. Um, and we'll show on Wednesday, we'll talk about whether or not that's still bothering him.